Today's video, I'm not going to call it fitness, although we are doing yoga, it's more about healthy mind, healthy body, healthy soul. Also, for anyone out there that is suffering from arthritis or any joint pain, back pain, or if you're just somebody that's not getting off your butt and you're not moving your body and you do nothing, join me today for this very simple sequence just to get the body and the joints moving. Hi, it's Kelly and welcome back to Me More TV. If you've watched any of my videos, you will know right now that I am in India. I am in the Himalayas. <laughs> if you want to see my experience at Ananda, this is a destination spa. I call it heaven on earth. You can check out my other videos. But today's video is a health video. I'm not going to call it fitness, although we are doing yoga. It's more about healthy mind, healthy body, healthy soul. I have two wonderful practitioners. One is Angel, who's not here today, and the other one, I'm going to let him introduce himself to you. Namaskar. My name is Niranjan, one of the yoga teacher here in Ananda in the Himalayas. We are going to practice such a beautiful series of practices that helps us to get release of the body pain, especially from the joints. This is what we call Sukshma Vayam or subtle exercises and uh, for yoga it is not only up to physical body this is something what we do try to bring the balance and harmony in body and mind as well that's right and you've spoken a lot about that um, during every session it's it's wonderful because I get the education I'm, I'm getting educated you know I thought I knew yoga I know nothing you know you you take it right back to the ancient history of, of, of yoga and what it truly means so, look at this. Let's get started. Should we do the mantra? Should yes, we just do it sure. How many times? Three times. Three times. Three times. Three times. Okay. You need a sheet? No. Nope. Uh, I'm going to try. <laughs> okay. So we'll try together. Yeah, yeah. Back straight, shoulders relaxed. Um, I, I'm sitting like this, obviously, because of my knees with arthritis. So we modify a lot of things to, to work around my knees and what I can and can't do. Head, neck, spine, one line. Eyes are gently closed. We are going to chant Mahamritinja Mantra. The mantra we chant for our physical well-being. We'll chant together three times. Bring our whole awareness to the center of the heart. Or you can say the place for Anahat Chakra, Heart Plexus. Being aware of that heart center, let's recite the mantra. So inhale here. Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushtivardhanam Urevarukam Iva Bandhana Mrityor Mokshiya Mamrita Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Shugandhim Pushtivardhanam Orevarukam Iva Bandhana Mrityor Mokshiya Mamrita Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Shugandhim Pushtivardhanam Orevarukamirva Bandhana Mrityor Mokshiya Mamrita Feel the vibration of the sound. Rub the palms to each other. Place your hands on the closed eyes. With a few blinks, open your eyes, bring your hands down. This rubbing of the hands, we call it palming. Creating heat. Isn't it? it is believed there is energy is everywhere. We are surrounded with the energy. When we are rubbing it, it is believed it is a collection of the energy. We are collecting energy within our hands. Because eye muscles are very sensitive, so we are absorbing that energy through the body, uh, into the body through the eyes. Mm -hmm. That's why we do it. And another reason. You see, traditionally, all the meditation practices, the people were doing in a dark place. You know, as per our Indian history, people were doing it in the caves. Mm -hmm. So whenever we are coming out from the dark place, 
moving into the light, it is always painful for the eye muscles. But if we do this warming for the eye muscles, then it accustomed to the light, mm -hmm. then we don't feel that yeah. pain in the eyes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that are the different reasons why we do the farm. I love that you, you break this down for me. You have a reason, you tell me why we do everything and the story that's attached. I love it so much. Thank you. Okay, so please get ready for the movements of the joints, the practices for the, all these joints we are going to do. These practices are basically to release the accumulated tension in the joints of the body. Whenever there is any imbalance of the energy happening, first it affects the joints of the body. And when it is affecting our joints, the modern medical science says this is the root cause of our arthritis. So it is very helpful or we can also call these practices anti-rheumatic practices. So we'll start with the joints in the lower body. So legs together, back straight, both the hands back. Just be very comfortable with your upper body. Okay. Now, bring a whole awareness to your toes. Now, pull the toes towards the body, like bending toes towards the body. And then clench them tight. Just imagine your toes as your fingers, how you are able to make a fist and you are able to open your fingers, palms. It's so the same way you should have that much control in your toes. Now let's synchronize it with the breath. So as you're pulling toes towards the body, inhale here. As you're moving away from the body, exhale here. When you're pulling toes towards the body, same time, you can spread your toes. Try to experience each individual toe, just like as your individual finger. Then cleanse them tight, like a nice fist, tight fist. Very nice. So you can feel the movement of each and every knuckle of the toes. Very good. Experience the stretch in the muscles of the toes. The simple practices we can try eight to ten times easily for each joint. Twice more. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, crunch. Again, inhale and stretch. Exhale and clench. Relax. The most important thing in this practice is the awareness. You have to be aware of your breathing and you have to be aware to that particular part of the body which you are working for. Okay. Now, so focus on that as you focus on that. You can see, end of the day, whole practice of yoga is to develop our awareness, developing the focus. So now focus on ankle joints, ankle bending. Inhalation, pull the feet towards you. Same time you can feel a good contraction in the knees. Find a nice stretch to your calf and a good sensation in your sole of the feet. Now move your toes or the entire feet away from the body. Find a nice stretch to your top of the feet. So breath in, flex in your feet, breath out an extension in the feet. If you have joint pain or if you want to make a practice deeper, always be a little slow in your practice. That's right. With the different purpose, the intensity of the practices changes. I know you're always saying to me, slow down, slow down. That's right, it, it changes the whole posture or the, the movement. Inhalation, slowly pull the toes towards the body. Exhale. The bones you are working for, we call it tarsal bones that is in our ankle joints so as per medical anatomy there are seven bones in that small area and within those 
bones there are ligaments tendons and cartilages there you know so what happens in the in the disease of arthritis and all all those cartilages become so hard so when you are doing the simple gentle move and with whole awareness circulation of the blood is flowing more there and energy is also going there so that helps to loosen all the tightness from those cartilages and the ligaments and that helps release all the tightness tension from pain from there it's amazing how good this feels just this whole sequence and you know i don't have arthritis in my ankles or toes but it's so important yes. to do the whole do every joint on your body relax feet now the rotation for ankle joints so toes are pointing forward turn your both feet one side towards the body other side and forward relax and other important point all the body parts whatever the body part is there it is connected to your neuron the brain cells so using the different parts body parts we are also using or giving some work or exercise to your brain too you see if you are going to countryside the people or old people still they have a very good control over their body that something we are losing in our urban life isn't it because they are other side because they use their body much and in a better way isn't it the people in the country in rural areas rural areas, areas yeah. yes yeah yeah because they're more it's physical work is physical it? work they have a nice control over the body parts even the brain works better <laughs> life is more peaceful <laughs> if we compare to metropolitan cities yeah. and urban areas exactly. last round try to keep my knees and not to move my knees yes it's very hard. or if you find it is moving so much you can do one by one you try to have a good control over the feet it should just be from the ankle shouldn't from it? the ankle it's very like hard that step to move my yeah. knees it's easy for you <laughs> and the uh, other option for the ankle it could be alternate movement too okay okay the same practice we can do in so many different ways but just to not confuse you we don't show you so many ways that's right, that's right. <laughs> like you simple. were doing these things now the one side only mm -hmm. otherwise we can also do this way same in the opposite direction same time okay now back straight shoulders slightly back hands by side of the body focus is on knee joint very good practice to loosen tightness from the knee joint so what we do here we contracting the knee joints knee caps moving towards the quadriceps muscles of the thighs tightening is there then we just release that tension relaxation is happening in the knee joint so that we can do like 10 times inhale and tighten the knees exhale release the tightness inhale see the activities in the muscles of the hamstrings quadriceps or the thighs how off as well or if you want to feel you can place your palms on the knee caps i can feel how it is moving back and forth and you said it just slow when you release isn't it yes so each time you can hold for few seconds there just to feel that okay last one very good next practice we will do it that is what we call knee bending okay so bending right leg into locking fingers holding the right thigh back straight opening chest left leg active facing in the front shoulder should be relaxed now straight in the right leg right leg just slightly above the floor and then bending knee bringing knee close to the chest the foot can be off the floor now synchronize with the breath inhalation is straightening knee exhalation bending knee inhale make a leg straight 
Exhale y bendiga. Inhale straight leg. Exhale bendiga. Inhale straight. Exhale bendiga. Hold focus on nature and experience the breathing, how the breath is synchronized with the movement of the leg. Twice more. This knee used to crunch terribly. It's not nothing now. See? It's gone. The crunch is gone. That is the effect of the practice yes and i know we're, we're talking we're talking more than we usually would in in this because we're, we're filming but usually it's just uh, we flow outside back to back straight inhale straightening the knee exhale and bend again this talking and discussions all happens in the initial stage what Just in the beginnings only. Yes, yes. So when we do for few days, after that there will be only practice. <laughs> <laughs> because we need to understand what we are doing, why we are doing, mm. and the way why we are doing like this, not like other way. Exactly. Uh, I think the, the talking in the beginning is important. Like the I call it the education. But I mean yes. while we're doing doing this. Like when I go home, obviously, I'm just going to be well, on my own, but very focused and aware of, of what I'm doing. And keep it slow. Last one. Relax, relax both legs, hands are back. Take two rounds of deep breathing. Feel the effect in your knee joints, ankle joints, in the toes. Again, legs together, back straight. Our focus will be on hip joints, hip joint. So this is what we call half butterfly. So ideally, we bend the right leg and placing the foot on opposite thigh. In case if you're not comfortable with the hip joint or knee joint, then you can place the foot on the floor and we keep the heel a little away from the body. Okay, and back straight. With one hand you are holding the knee, other hand you are just simply holding the foot. Okay. Now we practice slowly lifting the knee up, bringing it close to the chest, then pressing it down to the floor. Yes, so this is the practice. The synchronize with the breath. So inhale up, exhale and down. Good. Keep trying. Inhale up, exhale and down. I would prefer to do the practice this way, yeah. but you can do yeah. as you feel comfortable. Because all the bodies are different. Yeah. That's why we need always little modification in the practice. But it's good for everyone to see the advanced way too, I think. Yeah. Or the normal way. So inhale up, exhale down. I think this is the reason why there is so many variations in asanas. How, why this scripture says there are 8.4 millions of asanas mm. because maybe one is not suitable for me but the other can work for me it's true, it's true. <laughs> twice more inhale up exhale down find a nice movement in the muscles of thighs hips lower abdomen Good. see how the work happens <laughs> so this is a very good practice to loosen tightness from the hips and thighs Especially in the waist, people it's find so difficult to sit on the floor in cross legs position. Right. So this is very good preparatory asana for that. Okay. Right, other side. Right, other leg active, back straight. Inhalation lifting the up, bringing it close to the chest. Exhalation and pressing it down to floor. Inhale up. Exhale down. Just be aware of the left hip socket. When you do the practice for yourself, you may even close your eyes to be more aware to that particular part of the body. It is like meditating with asana.
Be aware of the practice, be aware of the breathing. Last round. Now you can release your back. Relax. So we were doing half butterfly, now we will try to do full butterfly. So in the full butterfly, or what we call Baddha Kona Asana, touching soles of the feet to each other, heels close to the body as you feel comfortable, back straight. Either you may hold the feet in the front, interlocking fingers, or you may hold your ankles as you feel comfortable. Back knee to be straight, shoulders relaxed, normal breathing, then you can bounce in the knees here. One of the most popular asana we use as a hip opener. Yes. If knee is hurting, what you can do, you can move feet a little away from the body, hold the legs here, back straight, Watch yourself, it is not hurting, you are comfortable, then you can move up and down. Okay. Otherwise, you can skip this practice too. Because I need to do this, but it, it affects, yeah. I need it for my hips, but it, the, the knee hurts. Yeah, the bending, because of the bending. Yeah. You can well, okay. avoid this practice. Yes, yeah. Lose yeah. It. Yeah. Now, we can do some practices for upper body, neck, shoulders, arms. So you can Sit in any comfortable posture of your choice. So let's start with hands. So both arms in the front, stretch the fingers, palms. Inhale and stretch here. Exhale and clench your hands. Either you can place the thumbs inside, clenching hands, or you can keep your thumbs outside too, as you feel. So breathe in, as your opening hands should be inhalation, as your clenching hands be exhalation. Inhale and stretch your fingers, palms, exhale, clench them tight. Inhale, stretch, exhale, tight. As I mentioned earlier, you can do this practice easily up to 10 times. Once more. Relax hands. Now the focus is on wrist joints. Arms are in the front, fingers together, thumb close to the finger. Now inhalation just bending from the wrist, lift the fingertips up, keeping elbow straight, arms straight. Now exhalation, move the fingertips down. Inhale up, exhale down. Breath in, lift the fingertips up, exhale down. The same practice we can also do keeping arms to the sides. This can be a little challenging for the muscles of forearms and upper arms. The focus should be on wrists only. Strike once more, inhale up, exhale down. Relax your arms. One more practice, again for the wrist joints. We call it a wrist rotation. So you make a fist here, and then you can rotate your wrists. The breathing can be normal. This is, these are the really good practice if you are working on computers mm -hmm. with the keyboards, mouse and all. You know, the wrists, hands, fingers get very stiff and tight. So this practice helps release that tension, tightness. Opposite direction. The joints of the wrist and ankles are very same. The joints of the ankle, mm -hmm. the bones, we call it tarsal bones. The joints in the wrist, we call it carpal bones. So there are seven bones, here is eight bones. <laughs> so really, good practice. Now, let's do a little practice for our 
elbow joints. Arms in front, try to palm to ceiling, arms parallel to floor, and bend the elbows here. Yes, elbows are slightly up. Now inhale, stretch your arms. Exhale, bend the elbows. Very good. Find a nice movement for the muscles of the upper arms, forearms, that is the working of the triceps, biceps. Though these practices are very simple, at the same time very very effective. And it helps us for a proper circulation of the energy in the body. And it prepares us for all the advanced asanas. So it is always best to do these practices if you are going to do any advanced asana after this. I like this one too. That yes, one. now we'll do the practice for shoulders. So stretching arms in the front, palm facing up, you place the fingertips top the shoulders bringing elbows close to each other. Now, inhalation lifting elbows up, moving them back as possible, and bringing them down. Inhale arms up, exhale down. Very nice. Find a nice movement for your shoulder blades, muscles in upper part of the chest, upper part of the back. Try to synchronize each move with the breath. Very good practice to release the tightness, tension from the upper back. Especially nowadays when people are working a lot on desk, on computers, for them. A wonderful practice. Now, the same practice, we can do it in opposite direction. While moving arms back, lifting up and down. In relation up, If you find it painful, then you can be very slow or you can also avoid it. Good. Is this too fast or not? Uh, can be a little slow. Yeah. Last one. And stop. Feel the effect in your shoulders. Now the practice is for muscles of the neck. But the thing is, one should be very careful if someone is having any cervical spondylosis or any other issue with the neck, especially when moving head down. Okay? Mm. They're not supposed to move head too much down. So, so any neck issues, maybe avoid this? Yes. So first practice, back and forth movement of the neck. So we're just moving head back, lifting chin up, Bringing head down, moving chin towards the chest. You have to be careful if you have any issue with the neck. Now with the breath, inhalation, moving head back. Exhalation and down. Inhale up. Exhale and down. Breath in and up. Exhale down. Inhale up, down, bring it back in the center. Because the muscles of the neck is very delicate muscles, very delicate joint. So the practices we can do three to five times, that is enough. Okay. Like all other joints, we can do more rounds, as I mentioned about 10, this would be a good amount, a good rounds, number of rounds, but for the neck, half of them is. Next would be twisting for the neck. So inhale here, exhale turn the face to right side, looking over the right shoulder without disturbing the shoulders. Inhalation back in the center. Exhale and change the side. Inhale center. Exhale side. 
Just experience this nice twisting of the muscles of the neck. We are working on the cervical region of the spine. One more round for both sides. Center. Next we will work on trapezius muscles that is the side of the neck. Inhale here. Exhale, drop it to your right shoulder. Find a nice stretch to your left side of the neck. Inhale, center. Exhale, inside. Make sure you are not lifting your shoulder. Center, exhale inside. Last round. So today, this many practices, now you are going to rest in Savasana just for two minutes, mm -hmm. okay. then we will stop here today. So lying down in Savasana, always remember if you practice even for even 15 minutes, try to rest at least for one minute in Savasana. Okay. If half an hour, then rest for two minutes at least. Okay. So maximum five minutes it can go. Okay. Legs little separate, arms by side of the body, palm facing up. Find your head, neck, spine in one line. Close your eyes. Just surrender your whole body to the nature. Let go all tightness from the muscles of the legs. Feel relaxed in your calf, thighs, head. Be aware of the arms. Feel relaxed in the muscles of the forearms, upper arms, shoulders. Be aware of your back. Mentally loosen the tightness and muscles of the lower back, upper back, the spine. Be aware of the abdomen, lower abdomen, chest. Feel relaxed in the entire muscles of the front. Relax your facial muscles, muscles of the eyes, forehead, nostrils, jaw. Feel relaxed in the whole body. Experience your body weight against the floor. Now, just observe your breathing. Feel relaxed with each exhalation. Now, leave your savasana, bring your legs together, bend the knees, feet on the floor, turn yourself completely to one side, any side, both arms to that side only, with the help of your hands, slowly come back into a sitting position. 
and we're going to conclude with three types of om chanting. So hands on the knees, back straight, eyes are gently closed. Bring your awareness in between two eyebrows. Mentally visualize tiny point of light. Being aware of that light, let's recite Om for three times. Having a sense of thanking to that Almighty for each and everything, for this wonderful life. With thanking notes, let's recite Om. So inhale deeply. Place your hands on the closed eyes. With a few blinks, open your eyes and bring your hands down. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you were able to do it with us. Um, I think the hardest thing for a lot of you, and, and it was for me initially, is the stillness, being just to be able to sit like that and doing those small movements and really concentrating and being aware. But it feels so good when you get there because I feel, after just this, I feel energized. If you'd like to hear the history of yoga, I'm gonna slide the card in there and you can hear Nirajan talk about the, the history and the different types of yoga. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me the thumbs up and don't forget to click on the notification bell and don't forget to subscribe. Namaskar. Thank you.